Today, we will take you deep into the world of the Hell's Angels, a notorious motorcycle club that's left an indelible mark on the annals of rebellion. Here are the stories of some of the most infamous Hell's Angels members currently rotting behind bars. Have you ever wondered what's the most shocking crime committed by the Hell's Angels? Meet the notorious Otis Garrett. His journey takes us back to the dark and tumultuous year of 1977, when the world was about to witness an unimaginable series of events that would send shockwaves far beyond the borders of San Francisco and Oregon. At the heart of this chilling saga stands Otis Garrett, an ex-president of the Hell's Angels Vallejo Wing, whose name would become synonymous with terror and infamy. The summer of 1977 began like any other, with people going about their lives, unaware of the gruesome fate that awaited some unfortunate souls. In a nondescript suburban neighborhood, two young lives were brutally snuffed out, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and unspeakable horror. Among the victims was 24-year-old Margot Compton, a young woman with dreams and aspirations that would never be realized. The other victim, a mere 19 years old, was Gary Sessler, whose life was also cruelly cut short in the prime of youth. But tragically, this sinister tale did not end with their deaths. What makes this crime particularly chilling is not just the brutality of the killings themselves, but the fact that these murders were only the tip of the iceberg. In addition to Margot and Gary, the victims included six-year-old twins. Their story, or rather, their heart-wrenching fate, would haunt the investigators for nearly two decades. As the investigators delved deeper into the crime scene, they discovered the horrific details of that fateful day. The two young girls, dressed in matching orange and yellow striped swimsuits, were found lying lifeless on the floor, covered with a blood-splattered bedspread. Their innocent eyes were forever closed, and their two favorite teddy bears lay at their sides as if offering some form of comfort in the face of unimaginable terror. The most haunting detail, perhaps, was that each of the girls had one precisely placed .22 caliber bullet hole behind their left ear. As the police later learned, these innocent souls were shot as they clutched their teddy bears tightly to their chests. Their mother, Margot Compton, was held pinned and forced to watch this unthinkable act of cruelty unfold before her very eyes. As if that weren't enough, the perpetrators, in an act of cold-blooded cruelty, then turned their attention to Margot herself. She was shot three times in the head, a brutal act of finality that left no room for mercy. Gary Sessler had met a similarly gruesome end, gunned down before he could intervene. In the wake of this nightmarish massacre, the community was left in shock and disbelief. How could such unspeakable evil exist within their midst? The police were overwhelmed, facing a crime so heinous that it defied comprehension. Otis Garrett, at that time, was a name few outside of criminal circles knew. However, he was soon to become infamous, not only for the chilling murders, but for the reign of terror he would unleash upon the world. Already serving a life sentence in Lomo Federal Prison in California for a narcotics conviction, Otis found himself at the center of a murder trial that would make headlines across the nation. The trial painted a terrifying portrait of a man who had once been a millionaire dealer of crank or methamphetamine. He was a man who had embraced a life of criminality with a chilling level of dedication. Otis Garrett's story became a defining chapter in the sordid history of the Hell's Angels, setting a precedent for their heinous crimes and their unrelenting defiance of law and order. In the end, Otis Garrett was convicted on four counts of murder and sentenced to four consecutive life sentences in prison. His life of crime had finally caught up with him, and he would spend the rest of his days behind bars a chilling reminder of the darkness that could lurk beneath the surface of even the most seemingly ordinary individuals. But Otis Garrett's story was just the beginning. The Hell's Angels had left an indelible mark on the world of organized crime, and their reign of terror was far from over. Join us as we delve deeper into the criminal underworld of this infamous motorcycle club, 
uncovering the shocking tales of its members who are currently serving time behind bars. Otis Garrett's story is just the tip of the iceberg, but hold on, there's more to uncover. Our next journey into the dark underbelly of the Hells Angels world takes us to the unlikely figure of Dr. James Kaufman, a respected endocrinologist from the quiet streets of New Jersey. Dr. Kaufman, known for his medical expertise, had managed to conceal a sinister secret, one that would eventually lead him down a treacherous path of crime, deceit, and murder. In the eyes of his colleagues and patients, Dr. Kaufman appeared to be living the American dream. A successful endocrinologist, he had established a thriving medical practice that earned him respect and admiration in his community. However, behind this facade of respectability lay a chilling truth. James Kaufman was leading a double life, deeply entangled in the criminal underworld. His journey into darkness began with an unlikely alliance, one that would have far-reaching consequences. Dr. Kaufman, it turns out, had joined forces with a member of the notorious Hells Angels motorcycle gang. His partner in crime? None other than his wife, April Kaufman. April Kaufman was not just any ordinary spouse. She was a renowned radio host and a fervent supporter of veterans' rights. Little did she know that her husband had a sinister side, one that would ultimately shatter their lives and their marriage. The cracks in their seemingly perfect life began to surface when April discovered James's involvement in an illegal drug trade. Shocked and betrayed, she decided that the only way out of this dark alliance was to divorce her husband. Little did she know that this decision would set off a chain of events that would lead to a shocking and brutal murder. In 2012, tragedy struck the Kaufman household. April Kaufman was found brutally murdered in their home. Her death sent shockwaves through the community and left investigators baffled. Was this a mere coincidence, a tragic turn of events in an already tumultuous relationship, or something far more sinister? As investigators delved deeper into the case, a chilling truth began to emerge. Dr. James Kaufman's ties to the Hells Angels and Pagan Motorcycle Clubs were no longer a secret. The criminal underbelly that he had concealed for so long was exposed for all to see. Suddenly, this seemingly ordinary doctor found himself at the center of a high-profile murder investigation. The charges against Dr. Kaufman were nothing short of shocking. He stood accused of a range of crimes, including murder and racketeering. The evidence against him painted a chilling portrait of a man who had embraced the criminal lifestyle with a shocking degree of dedication. The trial of Dr. James Kaufman gained not only national, but also international attention. It was a case that portrayed a respected doctor as an infamous criminal, a man who had betrayed the trust of his patients, his community, and his own family. As the evidence mounted and the courtroom drama unfolded, it became clear that Dr. Kaufman's life was spiraling out of control. He was facing charges of racketeering, drug dealing, and first-degree murder, a combination that seemed destined to lead to a lengthy prison sentence. But Dr. Kaufman had other plans. As he awaited trial in 2018, he chose a shocking and tragic path. In a final act of defiance or desperation, he took his own life, leaving behind a six-page suicide note. On that note, he claimed his innocence, a declaration that would haunt those who had followed his story. The story of Dr. James Kaufman serves as a chilling reminder of the dark and sinister underbelly of the Hell's Angels world. It's a tale of a man who had it all, success, respect, and a promising future, but who chose to embrace a life of crime, ultimately leading to his downfall and a shocking tragedy that would forever scar his community. But the Hell's Angels world is vast, and the criminal tales it holds are far from over. Join us as we continue our journey into the lives of some of the most notorious Hell's Angels members currently serving time behind bars, each with their dark and haunting story. Today, we delve into the riveting and dark tale of Randy Jorger, a name that sends chills down the spines of those familiar with the Hell's Angels world. Known as Mad, 
Randy Jorger's journey into infamy was nothing short of a symphony of rebellion, violence, and criminal prowess. He stands as one of the most notorious figures within the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, and his story is one of relentless defiance that shook the criminal underworld. Randy Jorger's story begins with his ascent through the ranks of the Hells Angels, the infamous motorcycle club with a reputation for mayhem and violence. He quickly earned his stripes and took the reins as the head of the outlaw Chicago chapter. However, this was just the beginning of his tumultuous and dangerous journey. Georgia's life soon became a complex web of crime, rebellion, and brutal acts of violence. His influence within the motorcycle club extended far beyond the borders of Chicago, eventually propelling him to the position of Midwest President of the Hells Angels. It was a position of immense power and responsibility, one that he wielded with ruthless determination. Throughout his reign, Jürger faced an array of charges that would send shivers down the spines of most individuals. His criminal portfolio included charges of drug trafficking, brutal acts of violence, firearms and explosive violations, arson and narcotics trafficking. He was a man unafraid of diving headfirst into the darkest corners of the criminal underworld, leaving a trail of chaos and destruction in his wake. What set Jürger apart from many others in his world was his ability to evade capture for an astonishing 17 years. He operated as a phantom in the night, consistently eluding the clutches of law enforcement. His elusive escapades only deepened the mystique surrounding him, solidifying his status as one of America's longest standing fugitives. The authorities, however, were not willing to relent in their pursuit of justice. In 2014, after nearly two decades on the run, Randy Jorger's luck finally ran out. He was apprehended in Mexico, marking the end of his reign as a fugitive. The charges against him were numerous and severe, reflecting the gravity of his actions and the trail of devastation he had left in his wake. Jorger's trial was nothing short of a spectacle, an event that laid bare the sinister workings of the outlaw biker world. It was a world where loyalty and brutality reigned supreme, and Jorger had been at the forefront of it all. The authorities had gathered a wealth of evidence that painted a damning picture of his involvement in criminal activities. The verdict came crashing down like a sledgehammer, a final reckoning for a man who had lived a life defined by defiance and violence. Randy Jorger was sentenced to a lifetime in prison, serving the consequences of his brutal actions. It was a sentence that reflected the seriousness of his crimes and the determination of law enforcement to bring him to justice. The legacy of Randy Mad Georgia endures as a reminder of the choices and actions that can lead a person down a path of darkness. His story serves as a testament to the allure of rebellion and the inevitable repercussions that await those who embrace a life of crime. Georgia's name is etched into the annals of Hell's Angels history a stark reminder of the brutal choices and violence that some within the motorcycle club world choose to embrace. But the world of the Hells Angels is vast, and the stories it holds are far from over. Join us as we continue our journey into the lives of some of the most notorious Hells Angels members, currently serving time behind bars, each with their dark and haunting story. Today, we delve into the gripping and dark narrative of Raymond Folks, a figure whose name still sends shivers down the spines of those who've crossed paths with the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Known within the club as Ray Ray, his story is a chilling chronicle of brutality, crime, and the unrelenting pursuit of power. Raymond Folks began his journey into infamy as a member of the Hells Angels, one of the most notorious motorcycle clubs in the world. It wasn't long before he climbed the ranks and assumed a position of prominence as the president of the Sonoma County chapter. His ascension to power marked the beginning of a reign characterized by intimidation, violence, and criminal enterprise. One of the defining features of Ray Ray's leadership was his encouragement of violence and criminal behavior within the club. He fostered an environment where brutality was not only tolerated, but often celebrated. 
This culture of violence extended beyond the boundaries of the Hell's Angels and left a trail of fear in its wake. Ray Ray's notoriety extended beyond the club, as he was even suspected of sexual assault involving a fellow club member's wife. It was a testament to his audacity and disregard for the boundaries of morality. Yet, despite the gravity of these allegations and numerous encounters with law enforcement, he managed to evade serious convictions for years. His ability to slip through the grasp of the law only added to his legend within the Hell's Angels. He operated with a sense of impunity, leaving behind a string of unsolved cases and frustrated investigators. It seemed that Ray Ray was untouchable, a master of evasion in a world where law enforcement was determined to bring him to justice. However, in 2017, the tide began to turn. A relentless law enforcement operation targeted the Hells Angels criminal operations, and at the center of it all was Ray Ray. He was indicted on conspiracy charges related to drug distribution, exposing the extent of his sinister empire. The trial that followed laid bare the depths of his involvement in the criminal underworld, revealing a web of corruption, violence, and criminal enterprise. The courtroom drama in 2019 left little doubt about Ray Ray's guilt. The evidence presented against him was damning, and it became increasingly clear that his reign of terror had reached its expiration defueled by a determination to bring him to just the authorities, had built a compelling case that left no room for doubt. In 2020, the verdict came crashing down, delivering a substantial prison term that put an end to Ray Ray's reign of terror. It was a moment of reckoning, a culmination of years of criminal activity and brutality. The sentence reflected the seriousness of his crimes and sent a powerful message to those who would follow in his footsteps. Raymond Folks, or Ray Ray, as he was known within the Hell's Angels, serves as a stark reminder of the dark side of outlaw motorcycle clubs. His story is a chilling testament to the allure of power, violence, and criminality that can permeate these organizations. It is a cautionary tale that highlights the inevitable consequences of a life lived on the wrong side of the law. But our journey through the lives of the most notorious Hells Angels members currently behind bars is far from over. Subscribe to our channel as we continue to explore the stories of individuals whose names have become synonymous with rebellion, crime, and defiance. And there you have it, folks, a glimpse into the dark and defiant world of these infamous Hells Angels members now serving time behind bars. Their stories are a testament to the unforgiving path they chose and a reminder of the repercussions of a life steeped in rebellion. Join us again for more tales from the shadows as we delve deeper into the world of defiance and crime. Until then, ride hard and live free. Remember to hit that subscribe button and stay true to the road of unapologetic rebellion. Brett Chaos Peche, once a prominent figure in the Bandidos and Brothers for Life, made a dramatic shift to the Rock Machine MC. His reputation as an enforcer was notorious, often seen in images brandishing a gun, a symbol of his feared persona. But what happens when such a figure faces an unexpected challenge? On a seemingly ordinary day, December 7th, 2023, at the bustling Kingsway City Shopping Center, a moment was captured that would pivot the course of Brett Chaos Peachy's life dramatically. The center's CCTV cameras, typically recording mundane daily activities, this time caught a scene straight out of a bikey drama. Peche, known for his tough persona and links to notorious bikey groups, found himself in an unexpected confrontation. The challengers? Two members of the Mongols, Brad Baker and Clovis Chonga. These weren't just any rivals, they were significant figures in the bikey world, making this encounter more than just a casual run-in. The tension was palpable. As Baker approached Peche from one side, Chonga closed in from behind. This strategic positioning by the Mongols was intimidating, to say the least. The air was thick with anticipation. Onlookers might have expected a showdown, a display of the fearlessness Peche was known for. But what unfolded next was startling. In a move that shocked everyone, Peche, instead of confronting or negotiating, made a split-second decision. 
he pulled out a knife, a clear sign of readiness for a fight. But instead of advancing, he did the unexpected. He turned and fled. This wasn't just a retreat. It was a full-on sprint into the safety of the shopping center, away from the looming threat of the Mongols. This footage, once it hit the internet, spread like wildfire. It wasn't just the act of running that caught people's attention, it was who was running. Brett Kaos Pechi, a man whose reputation was built on fearlessness and strength, was now seen in a completely different light. This viral video didn't just capture a moment of fear, it marked the beginning of a significant downfall for Peche. It was a visual contradiction to the image he had so carefully curated, and it resonated far beyond the walls of the shopping center into the realms of the bikey world and public perception. But how did the Rock Machine MC react to this display of retreat, especially from someone who portrayed himself as an unflinching enforcer? The answer lies in a decisive Facebook announcement. On January 3rd, 2024, the Rock Machine MC announced that their Perth and South Australia chapters were no longer part of their club. This was a big change, but the most important part of their announcement was about Brett Chaos Piche. They said he was no longer a member and was in bad standing with the club. This decision came after a video went viral. In the video, Piche was seen running away from a fight with members of the Mongols, another motorcycle club, at Kingsway City Shopping Center. For a club like Rock Machine MC, which is known for being tough, seeing one of their members run away from a fight was really embarrassing. Kicking out Petche and saying the chapters he was part of were no longer recognized was a big statement. It showed that the club has strict rules about how its members should act. They want to keep a strong and fearless image, and Peche's actions didn't fit that image. For Peche, this meant he lost his place in the club, and it damaged his reputation in the world of motorcycle clubs, where being tough and respected is very important. Brett Chaos Peche's life has been like a wild ride full of trouble and run-ins with the law, showing how much he was involved in the world of motorcycle gangs. Let's look at the Broad Beach Brawl in 2013. We're This was a huge fight with the Bandidos, a well-known motorcycle gang. It happened in a busy place, and Peche was right in the middle of it. These gangs and their standover tactics have no place in a modern society. The violence escalates to breaking point in just seconds. The fight was so big that he felt he had to leave Australia. So he went to Thailand to stay away from the Australian police. But Peche didn't stay in Thailand forever. After a while, he came back to Australia. Right when he landed, he was arrested. This wasn't a surprise because he had been involved in a lot of illegal activities with the Bandidos and another gang called Brothers for Life. These gangs often break the law, and Peche was a big part of that. Coming back to Australia meant he had to answer for his actions. He was part of the big brawl at Broad Beach and other crimes. The police had many questions for him. This was a big moment for Pecci, as he had to face the results of what he had done. Being in the bikey world for Pecci wasn't just about being in a gang. It was a life full of danger and often doing illegal things. He was really into this world, and it influenced a lot of his life. His actions with the Bandidos and Brothers for Life showed he was more than just a member. He was a key person in these gangs. During his time with these gangs, Piche got known as a tough guy. He wasn't scared of fighting or doing illegal things. But this kind of life also caused him a lot of problems. From the big fight at Broad Beach, hiding in Thailand, and then getting arrested in Australia, Peche's life has been up and down, mostly because of his deep involvement in the bikey world. The Rock Machine MC is a motorcycle club known all over the world, and they have a reputation for being tough and sometimes getting into trouble with the law. This club follows a strict set of rules and values. They care a lot about how they are seen by others, 
especially when it comes to being strong and fearless. When Brett Chaos Peachy was caught on camera running away from a fight at the Kingsway City Shopping Center, it was a big deal for the club. This kind of behavior goes against everything the Rock Machine MC stands for. They want their members to be brave and handle tough situations without backing down. Piche's actions that day showed the opposite of this, and it didn't sit well with the club. This incident didn't just affect Peche's place in the club. It also showed everyone that the Rock Machine MC won't put up with any behavior that makes them look weak or scared. They are very serious about keeping their image as a strong and fearless group. When Peche ran away from the fight, it was clear to the club that he wasn't living up to their standards. This is why they decided to kick him out and make it known that he was no longer part of their group. Brett Chaos Peche being kicked out of the Rock Machine MC is a big deal. It's not just about him losing his place in the club, it's about how quickly someone's reputation can change. Piche was known as a tough guy, but one moment where he seemed scared changed everything. Now, everyone is watching to see what will happen to him next. The big question is, what's next for Chaos Peche? Have you ever witnessed a moment where a single action changed everything? Share your thoughts in the comments below.